Welcome to another opening episode and today I'm going to show you something interesting in the London system. For those of you who are watching me for a long time, you know that I'm actually against London system. But today I want to show you a trick that actually my coach showed me like maybe I don't know how many years ago, maybe seven years ago. And I was using this against many opponents. This opening actually qualified me to the Russian Chess Junior Championship for the first time in my life. Now I was rated like maybe 18th and finished second. So, and this position is what made me actually achieve that. So instead of going for usual Bishop D3, which again, you know, most people play it, it's very interesting still. You know, the idea is basically to push e4 at some point. But after bishop b5, I think Magnus played it first. And then, you know, a lot of people were just kind of analyzing the position. And then maybe not even Magnus, but somebody just played it. Then, because I saw this position from Magnus's games, and then coach showed me, and he's like, all right, let's try to play it for a while. Because, I mean, most of the people will play move a6. And we will start by analyzing this move first. So I'll show you the game Magnus played against Vichy later and Vichy played a6 and Vichy collapsed in around 30 moves. So here the idea is that after takes takes there's queen a4. So this pawn on c6 is being attacked and the point is so black need to protect it somehow. They play bishop g3 which is the best move according to computer takes so let's say many people play bishop b7 here bishop d7 is not possible bishop d6 bishop b7 here white have come queen a3 move or they can take on d6 and play queen a3 and the idea is guys we are threatening to take this pawn on c5 and we're pinning this queen with this pawn so actually you know this is very very bad for black pieces so they can try 97 but then knight b3 and still this pawn is gonna be picked up so bishop g3 takes rook b8 trying to basically press b2 pawn queen a3 takes takes and here white have huge positional advantage look at those e5 c5 square this knight is coming this way this knight is coming this way rook c1 b3 you know white have just huge advantage and they will probably you know I mean, I'm not saying it's winning, but you have great chances here. So we analyzed move a6 again. I'll show you the games Magnus played later. Now let's look at queen a7, another possible move. And let me know in the comments. I can play this position during title Tuesday events. You know, let's just maybe create London system, you know, kind of repertoire where I'm gonna show you some tricks and actually basically show that it's possible to play even against grandmasters. Bishop c6 takes queen a4 and again we're kind of trying to go for the same queen a3 idea, bishop d7, queen a3 and look again how this maneuver here, basically queen a4, right? Queen a4. I'm not sure why it doesn't let me, all right, basically this is now again queen a4, queen a3 and bishop g3 and again there is this pin with queen, rook e8, knight e5, takes 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 and once again guys look at the positional advantage white have they have beautiful knight on e5 rook at some point will come this way and maybe this knight will potentially come to c5 in future and of course you know white maintains little ledge another move to analyze is knight e7 and I'll show you another game Magnus played on this position against none other than Pasiocic Marin from Croatia. Bishop d3, knight to 6. So here a bunch of moves. b6, which is a huge mistake. e4 takes, takes. This is actually from Magnus's game where he ended up winning the game. I'll show you how it's finished. So let's analyze, you know, most, I would say, knight to 6. Knight to 5, basically sliding this knight to e5 square, b6, h4, and starting king side attack. Queen f3, and here, white have huge initiative, h6 at some point will come, 
potentially bishop h4 this bishop is looking towards h7 maybe at some point even castle and d4 or let's say rook d1 not even castle because let's say keep the king in the center and then play e4 so why have some edge but in this position according to computer the best move is actually to take h take gp but you know why most of the people won't play this move is basically the fact that this rook is now opened on h file and there might be some huge troubles here so it's actually very important to understand that once this file is open there are a bunch of opportunities for white pieces to win so again the best move queen b6 takes now queen c6 knight d5 and again g4 knight d7 queen c2 now threatening to take on h7 g6 knight f3 and again white maintains small edge so bishop c6 now b takes c6 the idea is that this bishop is coming to a6 basically threatening on this diagonal queen c2 and again the idea is very simple again trying to pick up h7 pawn and maybe go for g4 g5 you have a clear plan now and i i think i played a couple of games here and people just collapse within a couple of moves but the best move is takes takes and bishop a6 now bishop is looking here now knight e5 threatening to take on c6 rook c8 knight b3 knight e4 knight c5 h6 knight e4 takes knight e7 queen a5 queen d2 and white again positionally slightly better look at those squares on e5 and c5 you know queen trade is actually favorable for white pieces and again white are slightly better and let's say in the following position queen b4 there is again queen d2 takes takes knight d4 king d1 c5 you know at this point it's kind of you know probably again trollish but here it's more equal but i don't think people below 2000 actually know something here so you're safe to play it and again try it let me know in the comments what do you think and now I want to show you two games Magnus Carlsen played against Anand and Basiocic. Let's go. So the first game is the game against Basiocic. I show you the line, what happened in the game. So knight is 7, which we analyze bishop d3. And here Basiocic played b6, which is a mistake because after e4, he has to deal with basically... Now e5 is being threatened. And also, if d takes e4, what happened in the game, you have to take on e4, and after takes, through b8, there is d takes e5. And unfortunately, if basically bishop c5 couldn't, can't be taken, because basically this is now under attack. And b takes e5, of course, cannot be taken for the same reason, because bishop on d6 will be taken. So bishop g3 was played, takes f5. So again, queen d1, I'm not sure, of course, the idea is basically simple, if takes takes, this pawn is still under attack and you know they will have to protect it but of course the position is just completely lost even though maybe Basiocic should have gone for this line but again you know looks looks very very awful. So but instead f5 right away and here Magnus found absolutely insane queen gate, rook gate and c6 intermezzo move the idea is that after takes c7 both rooks are under attack and white are winning the game so basiocic played knight d5 takes takes rook d1 rook d1 king d1 bishop a6 knight e5 rook c8 trying to take the pawn c4 b5 trying to basically create some counterplay but nothing can happen because after f4 basiocic simply resigned by the way this happened in the same tournament those games i'm showing you right now so here knight on e5 is so strong that it can be pushed away because of this pawn on f4 this pawn is coming potentially you know trade the skin and of course white will end up winning the game and this happened in round 12 and in round 20 so in world championship in blitz world championship there are 21 rounds in blitz magnus was playing against anand in round number 20 and again same position but now anand plays a6 after takes takes queen a4 look at what he's doing he plays rook b queen a3 what exactly i showed you this this all pins around the king takes takes and here magnus got light edge because these squares are just so so sweet 
that a nun can't do anything. 97, queen d6, and also in this structure, as it turns out, pawn on c6 is actually a huge weakness. And unfortunately, now this has been attacked, this has been attacked with rook and queen, and of course, Vichy has nothing to do, and again, he collapsed in just under 25 moves, because in the following position, he admitted his loss. As I said, guys, very interesting setup. Let me know in the comments if you've seen this before, if you're gonna play it, and try it. Don't play regular bishop d3, don't play some stupid little Jabba London stuff. Try this, I and mean, Jabba London is not stupid, but you know, this one might be very tricky as well. So again, go in the comments down below, let me know if you'll try it out. If you tried it out already, I'll see you in the next videos. Bye-bye.